and welcome to another love discussion. I'm Jaha Weimer Jarvis here with Gabby. Hi. Um, I'm just briefly going to say she's really into, you know, the whole fitness world. Um, she's really kind of geared her life towards that whole realm of stuff. So I'll let her talk about that. Oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, no, I've been into fitness for a while. I graduated from SUNY Plattsburgh with my degree in fitness and wellness science. I'm a personal trainer, certified yoga instructor, Pilates bar, do tons of fun stuff. I teach self-defense. I work at all females gym. I do my own personal training business. I train for pageants. I do modeling, which I train for that. So it's a fun time. It's fun. She's got quite, <laughs> quite the resume there. I know, it's very long. So um, anyway, with that being said, I know we've already kind of had a love discussion on fitness and I guess like um, positive self-image and whatnot. Um, but having known you uh, for quite a little bit of time, um, I kind of been able to kind of not necessarily go along your journey with yeah. you, but I've paid attention and it seems like you've really kind of shifted gears and you know switched lanes and really focused on being into fitness and yeah. whatnot and caring about yourself so i'd say that's like a a big like a big boost in self-confidence yeah yeah i think so the whole idea with the discussions themselves um we're just talking about things in life things in human life that we can do or maybe change that will ultimately better us Yes. And then hopefully that'll help us go out and help the communities elsewhere and whatnot. So with that, I feel like with self-confidence, um, you know, it's it's a really important part of people's character. Um, it's it's hard to kind of develop. Everybody's doing it every day. You're building every single day, trying to maintain it, but also continue building upon it to get to a point where it's noticeable that you are gaining that self confidence. It takes some time. It takes some real introspect. Uh, excuse me, introspection, and um, you know. So I mean, briefly, I want to hear what kind of got you into all of that. So it kind of starts back, oh my God, we're going back to like 2015 when I first applied for the Miss New York USA pageant. Mm -hmm. I did it as a joke, not a joke, but I didn't think it was real. Mm -hmm. And then um, they called me, I did the interview and I told them my whole backstory with my eating disorder and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And I got selected and I was like, oh, like there's no way in how I got it. Right. I got it. So I actually ended up competing. But my confidence and self-esteem like really boosted was because of a good friend of mine kind of like sat me down one night and he kind of really just like programmed it. And it's been like a journey like every day, like it's kind of like a struggle, especially with like social media and Absolutely. everything. Like even like in the modeling and stuff, like I walk fashion shows now and everything, but just like, it's kind of hard sometimes because you're on social media and people are photoshopped, but at the end of the day you have to remember like that's not real life. Right, and absolutely. confidence for me comes from like if I do a heavier weight. Like okay. my sumo deadlifts, for example, I did 200 for, I was so excited. Yeah, yeah. My confidence in the gym went just like sky high. Which makes sense. I felt really jacked. No, that makes sense. But like I want to just talk about that social media part because like that's a big thing. That's a huge thing right now. Everybody's on it. And especially when you're doing something like what you do with fitness and whatnot, it's like there's a lot of people out in social media that aren't realistic. There's there's things that you see that might seem ideal, but that's not your your average kind of uh, yeah. whatever you want to say physique or something like that, or even I don't know how you want to put it, but it's not an average thing to obtain. So it's like for you to say what you're saying, it's like okay, I'm glad you didn't gain like self confidence from the social media no. aspect because that it's easy for people to kind of gain a false self confidence through that because it's not about the confidence that's coming from it. It's more about like attention seeking. You know what I mean? So like for you to say it's it's getting a higher or like a PR or something yeah. like that when you're weightlifting, that's awesome and. Um, Good for you. I'm glad well, to you. hear. Thank you. I was very excited. Absolutely. I was very pumped. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, that's that's awesome. But it's like, like you said, it's a, a never-ending journey. You know, you're not probably where you would love to be, but you're not where you were. Yeah. And that's a very important thing. I feel like personally, like that's why I can have these love discussions because it's easy to talk about things because it's not like 
we're having a lecture type of setting where I'm speaking at somebody or at the people at home watching and stuff like that. It's more like we're having a discussion based off of, you know, experiences and whatnot. And like to be able to do that, I'm hearing your perspective. I obviously didn't know what put you and really drove you to do yeah. what you do. But to hear it, I'm I'm honestly thankful that you shared it with me yeah. but also it's just it's it's awesome to hear what actually drove you because you never know you know what I mean yeah and I think a lot of the times too is that people like where you're saying with social media I think just like because I do like shoots and stuff and like I mean we kind of are like same age group but mm -hmm. like even like the generation or like kids younger than us like they see these people on TikTok and Instagram and I've told like my little cousins for example like that one photo that you see that's out of like a hundred photos where Absolutely. I'm not posed right. And that's why where people are like, they get the confidence from social media. It's not real life. Like to me, the biggest confidence booster is nothing like about my looks. It's all about someone says you have a good vibe. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest compliment to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. And I just think, I don't know. Like, no, that's, I mean, I that's, that's a great perspective to have because like it's easy to fall into the trap where you care about looks. You it's, it's easy to be vain in yeah. today's world. You know what I mean? Everybody's looking at you. You're always looking at other people. You have Snapchat, TikTok, like you said, people are literally performing for other people to get more people to look yeah. at them. So it's like, I get it, it is what it is, but like the way the, gr the world's going, especially with younger generations, they're more focused on that look that you get, the look that you can get from making everything on point to a T and then putting it out to the world so that people think that that's what your life looks like all the time. Yeah. And that's just not true. So it's like, like you said, it's, it's, it's hard to even say that people would, I don't know everyone's lives, you know what yeah. I mean? But to say that people would gain self-confidence through things like that, it's hard for me to personally see it because yeah. if I were to be conscious of things like that happening, and I, I can't speak on it because I don't live that life, yeah. but at the same time, you know, if I were to be conscious of me doing something for somebody else's satisfaction, um, that would kind of like mess with me at it's my weird. core, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, it doesn't feel right. So I think it's even more important to like know where it's coming from Yeah. and to know like, I guess to be real with yourself because that's really the problem that we have with the social media and everything. People aren't being real. It's a lot oh, of no. fake things. You know, you have filters and everything that can enhance or or, or sh shape and mold things for your liking. So it's like, it's just hard. It's it's hard to know yourself in a world that changes you all the time. You know. Well, what I mean? the, everyone sees you from like one perspective. If mm -hmm. like you put the social media, someone will like see something and they'll judge you off that photo. But mm -hmm. when they talk to you, like ninety nine point nine percent of the time, people that see my social media before talking to me think I'm the world's biggest bitch. Like <laughs> I have people tell me that all the time, yeah. and I'm like, but like, how? Right, because they like, don't know you, and yeah. but that and see that's. That's not, I guess, what you're putting out to the world, obviously. No. That you're not purposefully putting that out I to the world. Slots and right, stuff. right. Unicorns. But to no. other people, you know, not knowing who you are to the core, like they're just seeing a picture and yeah. creating something off of that. It's funny because a few months back, um, through this love page, we created this video and it was like the message was pretty much like um, keep your eyes shut and you're just listening to two people speak. You know what I mean? And as you're hearing them speak, it's almost as if you're creating an image of that person in your head yeah. before you see them. So then at the end of the, the video, you're opening your eyes, it you know, opens up and then you see two people. And who knows what people think, but the idea is that you've created somebody that may not look like what you thought yeah. you're about to see, you know what I mean? So it's like, we have to break that thing. It's a whole, it's a whole journey towards, I guess, being able to be confident in yourself because um, there's a lot of obstacles, there's a lot of walls, there's a lot of barriers that need to be broken in order to get to a place where you can realistically be confident. There's so many things that can convince you that you are there, but the moment those enhancements to your life are not there, you're what what you what are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just it's a really hard thing to talk about because I feel like the majority of the world is more willing to kind of follow that stuff. It's easy yeah. to do it. You're watching a lot of things that tell you that's the way to be. But I don't want to be like the naysayer and say, no, that's not how to live, because who, who am I? You know what yeah. I mean? But at the same time, 
being realistic with the human being as we are like socially and like to the core of who we are as people, um, I just don't think it, it's beneficial to the progression of who we are as people. No, I think with all like, what was the movie I just watched on Netflix? The Social Dilemma, they even go into it now like, and they like Joe Rogan too, they do a whole thing like since Insta, well they say, they don't say Instagram exactly, but I think it was 2011, the mental illness and like body dysmorphia and anorexia skyrocketed up to like 60%. Absolutely. And it's just disturbing, not disturbing, but like, I have so many friends I'm not gonna that like I've done pageants and stuff and they make their lives seem like this huge amazing thing in the end of the day like it's not that even like for like my Instagram like I try to show like I am a positive person right. but I have my days right. like life knocks you down but you that's you have to be real that's when you pick yourself back up and mm -hmm. with confidence I think that's where I've helped build myself up more like right. some of the darkest times I've had I've gained the confidence in that because I was able to pick myself back up, right. kind of like the Batman quote. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> throw that in there. Yeah, but no, that's really good because like that whole idea of the body dysmorphia and stuff like that, it's not coming from a place that's like psychological in nature. Yeah. It's almost being forced upon you because you put your, you can check your reflection on your phone yeah. and it's going to change what you look like if you do the right thing, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Even the pose, even just the way you stand, like the pageant poses, like your foot this way, it makes your like curves and everything right. stand out 20 times better. So it, it's, it's purposefully creating an image that's not actually what it is. Exactly. And I mean, to a T that, or to a point, excuse me, that's like, I guess appealing, but why is that visually appealing to people where that's more likely to get the likes and to get the traction on the internet and stuff like that? Because the realistic person that you see in life is what you should be able to see online and like it just the same. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. as it's it's as simple as the poses. It's as simple as how you, you know, shape your body, I guess. Yeah. But then it goes as extreme as actually like just recreating your entire being yeah. you know what i'm saying and like that again i can't speak on it because yeah. i don't know but it's just something that i feel like it, to the core is a self-confidence thing oh, yeah. but i i know that there are people in the world that will say no it's not about the confidence it's just what i'd like you know what i mean so it's hard to like say what where the root of it actually is because you know it, that may be true, and then again somebody could be lying to themselves yeah. there. So it's like, wh who am I to judge? I think with confidence too, like the other thing that goes into when it probably sounds weird is ego, mm. and that's where to me I think when you have your lowest, so when your your ego is at its lowest, you don't really have the ego as much. Mm -hmm. I think your confidence comes up because all like the things that are physical they don't matter. Mm. To me, like the most confident people I notice are the ones that have the good posture. Not about the clothing brand they have, it's how they carry themselves. And I guess the way, this sounds probably weird, but this of like over the past few years, the most confident people are the ones that go out and help others, are the ones that like smile at someone that like hold a door open even right, for people. Right, that to right. me like. It's like common courtesy type yeah. of stuff. Like you're being selfless in life. It's not about you necessarily. Yeah. No, that kind of makes, I mean, that definitely makes sense because it's not really doing things for you. You're doing things that you can do for others, which I get, yeah, that comes along with the comment. I love that. <laughs> that I just like awesome. the things I've noticed and like the most confident people like doing like all like the modeling stuff like the most people that were so confident but like secure in themselves mm -hmm. were the ones that were out helping others. Like mm -hmm. if someone had like a last minute emergency, they were right there. Right, they weren't worried about w how this would affect yeah. them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense and that's honestly, uh, that, that shows people's character. It's oh, not yeah. necessarily about being vain and being selfish, I guess. It's more about being, um, a uh, positive vessel for others, I yeah. guess you can say. All I can really see is what you're doing through what you post and like, congratulations to you for a lot of the things that Thank you do. You. There was a but, lot of um, dark stuff that I mean, like not to be like depressing, but like, yeah. like I think like the other day I shared something on Instagram because like someone was like, oh, your life is so perfect. I'm like, no, it's really not. Like mm -hmm. I just put my dog down. Like the person I was like in love with broke my heart into shatters. Like. And it's like, I don't, cause you see all these Instagram people like post like all these happy things, like people in our normal day lives posting only the highlights. 
Exactly. So in our heads, we're like, oh, what am I doing wrong with my life? Because I'm not there yet. And how can I make my life more like that? Yeah, we make almost like an alter ego for ourselves. So then when we sit back or away, like we turn our phones off, mm -hmm. that alter ego's gone. Right, and then now who are we? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's literally, that's like kind of outside of love and what we're doing with yeah. this. Outside of that, me as a person, that's something that I like. I try to help people with, not yeah. to say that I have my life figured out at all or know like that I'm the most confident yeah. person ever, but I feel like I've personally put myself through certain things, not purposely, but like it's just happened. Yeah. And it's like shaken me enough to like kind of have these perspectives where I can kind of help other yeah. people. And when, you know, you hear people saying these things about like, um, your life's perfect online. Yeah. Like I, I, I kind of relate because I was in a position where people were just like, you know, goals and stuff like yeah. that a lot of the times. And it's just like, what, well, why? Because it's, there's a picture there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it's like, what makes this goals just the way it looks like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, it, it's, it's hard because people do a lot of comparison and people want to be, I, I don't want to say people want to be other people, but it's like, it's kind of, you no, know, people will look up to certain things and certain people in like social media or like pop culture that, um, I don't know, they're like super rich or like, you yeah. know, famous or for whatever reason they're looking up to them. I have a few people that I look up to that I'll probably never meet. Will Smith, yo, <laughs> Will Smith. please come on right there. Anyway, but like there's people that like, I do want to meet in life and I feel like I can talk about and I feel like I know them based yeah. off of what they put out. But like at the end of the day, I don't know these people and yeah. like they're living a life, but who's to say that that's what it looks like at home. Yeah. But that comes back to what we're talking about. It's like, I would love to do what all of those people are doing, but is it as good as I think it is because yeah. I'm seeing it online? Like, I don't know if everybody's all peaches and cream at home, but yeah. it feels that way and it looks like, and this is a big thing too, um, it looks like that money will make you be able to do all of those things. You know yeah. what I mean? In order to be that person, be that influencer or be that celebrity or whatever it is, you have to gain money. You yeah. have to get the most money. It's all about money, which I mean, money is how you live at yeah. this point. So you have to have it, but like, it's becoming so important in people's lives that it's almost taking away from humanity. Which is like really sad. That's I like I don't have friends that are like that, but I've been in conversations where the per, like people only talk about the expensive things they have, and I've gone. I had I used to be like that until mm -hmm. a few years ago when the one person passed away, mm -hmm. and after that I realized no amount of money in the world can bring people back, and like it's time that's important, not right. money. It's the memories. It's the things that yeah. are, it's. I guess it's the things that are intangible. Like money will get you things that you can grasp, yeah. things that you can attain. But like, there's things in life that you really can't attain. Like you can't just get a memory unless you experience it. You know what I mean? You can't. You can't get an experience without doing something. Yeah. So all of those things in life, people are taking themselves away from because they're more focused on the image that they're putting out to the world. It's cool to, I guess, like do things and then yeah. document them. Yeah. Like people do that all the time, but when you're not doing the thing, but you are making it seem as if like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like making it seem like way better than it actually absolutely. is. Absolutely. Just like creating an image for your life. Like you said, a, an alter ego, another persona, it's a facade. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like a storefront. This little storefront here can look a certain way, but on the inside, it could be a huge warehouse. You don't know, yeah. but it's what's created on the outside that you are thinking it is. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a detriment, I think, to the confidence because people are finding their like self-worth, their, their self-confidence through things things and through yeah. other people and through their phones you know yeah. what I mean and that's just like super unrealistic but I think it's hard to break that when it's all that's being pushed out and the other thing is too is with phones so many people nowadays are on social media I don't even know how, I forgot the hours that people spend on it mm -hmm. and those are hours like this sounds probably like so old school that they could be using to build their character or like finding hobbies that they're passionate about and doing like even like painting, I don't even know, but like anything. I couldn't imagine growing up, like I couldn't imagine being 18 with TikTok and everything. I would not be into probably, I'd probably be into fitness, but not the way that I am. Right. Like, and it just kind of scares me You'd a little bit. You'd be doing bit. fitness for TikTok. 
Yeah. <laughs> Making like five minute TikTok videos. Right. But like when I post fitness stuff, like it's not to show off. Like, I mean, I like to show off my hard work. Mm -hmm. I will not lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like I do it because like I did, I used to be like, I think the lowest I was ever at like 110, 105. And like, that's horrible. But I was obsessed with that. Right, right, right. And like when you see these girls, like, I don't know if it's true, like Kim Kardashian ever watches this or ever come at me, but like. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> no. If you want to. Right there. But she says she weighs like 130 and that's, no, that's not realistic with her bone structure. But like when a little girl sees that and like the little girl's probably like an average body, weighs right. 140, that's mm -hmm. going to cause all these issues and, and confusion. it's just, yeah, and mm -hmm. it's just. Social media. I love social media because there are so many positives. Mm -hmm. Like, because like I try to use it as a platform to build people up and let Which them know. Which is what know. it's perfect for. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it should be for. And I feel like so many people have a platform and they don't take advantage of it Absolutely. or use it in a negative way. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy. There was one girl I was talking to. She was 19, and she thought she kept saying she was fat, and I thought she was joking. Mm -hmm told later on she really was so convinced she was fat because she didn't look like somebody from Instagram and I was like that's so that's bad so it's so bad I was like she was a gore she was so sweet so gorgeous and I'm just like how can that affect you and like I mean I get it at that age too but like that's what scares me about everything so I try to use like my platform to show like I mean fitness doesn't have to be like everyone's main outlet. But for me, fitness is like, just even like health, like mm -hmm. eating healthy to me, like self-love. Mm -hmm. To me, the biggest form of it is self-discipline. Not being like completely strict with everything, mm -hmm. but eating the right foods because I love myself. Not trying to like look like the girl in the magazine, but I'm doing this because I love myself right. to want my right. body to work. And I'm not way. always comparing myself to that. Like I'm not doing this for yeah. that. You know what I mean? It's hard not to be, I used to be like, yeah. like a thousand percent, but yeah. I think there's such a mindset that needs to be like twisted or yeah. turned. Mm -hmm. It's just getting the people to like see that. Getting people to I guess like buy into it, but it's like they've already bought into the stuff that's already out there. Yeah. So it's like exactly what you were saying. I'm glad you said the story about the girl because like that's so common, and especially like we were lucky enough to not necessarily have the TikTok. We had Vine. We, we had Vine, but it was more like being funny. But mine like, was awesome. Yeah, though. it was awesome. And it was a good platform for people to do yeah. very cool things. And now they're super famous and whatnot. Yeah. But like, you know, it's like that shifted. Like even Instagram back, I was talking oh um, the other day. Yeah, we were talking about Instagram and it's like the origins of Instagram and what it used to be. <sighs> like it wasn't necessarily about what we do these days. Like no. I can say personally, my Instagram is nothing but professional pictures. Yeah. And I did that purposely yeah. because like, for one, I wanted to like rebrand myself personally, but I like the way they look yeah, and I don't want nice. to change it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, but back when I first had an Instagram, when I first made it, I think in high school, I didn't, I made a, I, I might've taken a picture of this water or something and I said, look at how cool the frost is on I'm the dead. glass, you know? But like, that's how, that's how innocent social media yeah. used to be. And it became something where not only can you monetize it, yeah. you can create a whole new person for yourself. And that's what's getting to our, like, I guess to our heads. Yeah. And it's, it's more, it's easier for people to buy into that because it's it's appealing, you know yeah. what I mean? Attention, money, all those things are good. Well, it's instant gratification. Exactly. Like you post a photo and mm -hmm. like you get one like it automatically releases some type of Right. It makes you feel better, yeah. but only for that moment. So you want to keep doing that. And then it and creates emptiness later exactly. on. Exactly. Exactly. So you're always trying to fill that void by continuing to do whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's posting or whatnot. And it's just like you have to you have to sit back and really look at your life and just know like be i guess be conscious in what you're doing and why you're doing yeah. it and then i guess at that point you can do whatever you want i yeah. mean you're a free human being to be who you want to be but it's like just be real you know what i mean don't don't lie to yourself i think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're sitting back uh, uh, um, giving yourself an impression that's not true. I can say that from a place of experience because yeah. I've lived that life. Like, I've I've lived the life where I've like convinced myself I was like in a better place than yeah. I actually was, and for so long it worked, but yeah. eventually it didn't. It and catches up. It caught up, and and eventually I had to just deal with. I guess I don't like to call them demons because that's super. I mean, it's I, I don't know. I don't like demons. Yeah. <laughs> so no, like, no, but no, you know, no. I had to deal with my stuff. 
And so taking, it's easy to say, okay, you know what? This is hard, so yeah. I don't want to deal with it. I'll just repress it, move on. But the more you do that, the worse it gets. Oh, Later yeah. down the road, it's going to come back and be even worse. So at that point in my life, and that's why, like, for me, a lot of people say 2020 was, like, kind of detrimental for them. Yeah. It was tough. But, like, for me, I think it was almost a blessing because it not only in a time where I was kind of going through, like, a little self journey, it was a time where I was allowed to really focus on myself because I didn't have to focus on, you know, going to work all the time. Yeah. And like, it, not to say that that's a bad thing, but I just had enough time to really focus on me and know what I, who I am, what I'm about, what I was doing to kind of make my life what it was. And that's where I think I gained my self-confidence. That's where it came like back to me. Yeah. I think for a period of time in my life, I was fabricating this self-confidence because it's just what I was comfortable with. Yeah. And you know, it, it, that was kind of like an instant gratification type of thing where I, I might have liked the attention that I was getting or whatever it was. And it just wasn't real at, you know, at the, at the root of it all, I just wasn't 100% happy. Yeah. And I convinced myself that I was, but when I had to really truly dig deep and figure out where I was in my life, you know, I had to figure out what's actually gonna make me happy and what actually does make me happy is like you said, I like helping. I like being a place where, or like, it sounds super corny, but I like being like a beacon of hope for like people. Well, that's good you though. know what I mean? Like I like to do that and I feel like I don't know what my calling is in the world. I don't know what my purpose is, but I feel like for now it's doing what I'm doing. It's yeah. doing things like you said with your platform, trying to create these discussions and put them out into the world so that other people can take from them and and and, and better themselves. Yeah. I think one of the other things is too is self-confidence and it sounds, I don't know if it like makes total sense, but like when I think about it, it's like, when you're kind of saying like people, like we create like a fault, like confidence, mm -hmm. like because of that. I think at the end of the day, when you feel really are self-confidence is when you are alone and you still feel that like, not like, like, I don't know how to explain, like you just feel good. Like, See, I call it, I how I saw it. it, I called it like peace. Yeah. I felt peace not being out only or being in other people's eyes, yeah. I feel peace within myself. Yeah. And no matter what, it doesn't matter where I am, what I'm doing, what happens, I've I've gained an inner peace that doesn't get disturbed at this point, you know what I mean? No matter where I'm at and what I'm doing. And that's what really showed me that, no, I'm not where I wanna be again, but I'm in a much better place mentally. I'd say even physically, it, it, it helps when it's weird because confidence is not like something like you can hold. No. It's something that you feel, it's something that you think. But in turn, what it did for me is it made me feel per like, like yeah. just within myself so much better physically that I'm able to like sit up a little taller. I guess yeah. that's kind of what's supposed to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, you know, like they say, you walk down the road a little taller as well. And like, I feel that without even necessarily trying, I feel like there's a lot of trying to be confident. a certain way. Yeah, trying to be confident and that's fine. That might be some people's way of getting there. Yeah. But it's like, it, you'll know when you've gotten to the point where you're actually confident. You're no longer doing things for others. You're no longer yeah. doing things to get the instant gratification. It's just, it's what it is. You know what yeah. I mean? Life is what it is. I, I live by this little quote. It's a, a case Rasra, you probably heard of it. That yeah. sounds really familiar. Yeah, I mean, it's, so what it is is what will be will be. Yeah. And it's pretty much it is what it is. Yeah. But like, that's kind of my whole mantra. Like. There's things in life that you can change and there's things that in life you absolutely cannot change. And we we do a lot of focusing on things we can't do anything about. So that wastes a lot of our energy. That might even be a detriment to our self-confidence because oh, yeah. we're doing things that we cannot change personally within ourselves, but we're trying to do it maybe to look like somebody else, like you said, or be like someone else, or be like something else. Yeah. And. Um, that's just a waste of energy, to be honest. So it's like we have to just, as human beings, and I've said this before and I'll keep saying it, we just have to focus on doing the things that are important, doing the things that feel right for us. Yeah, You know, because it has to sit with you well. Because if you're doing something and you don't like, it's almost like I love my job. It's like I work three jobs right now, mm -hmm. but all of them, I'd never go to work upset or pissed off that I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. 
and that gives me the confidence to teach my classes mm -hmm. like not being like this person, but like my class, I love, like I just told you, we were doing murder yoga. Yeah. Like if I was like where I was in the beginning of everything, <laughs> I would not even have the balls to be like, let's try murder yoga. I'm gonna have to ask you to explain <laughs> that because we're not killing people here. No. We're not doing yoga. I'm not doing yoga, but we're not doing yoga and killing people. No. So let we her just, Yeah. <laughs> so we listen, we do like half kickboxing, half like hit intervals, and then the rest of the class, we all like murder podcasts with like comedy on the side. So like it's not like super violent or grime, like grimy or whatever that word is. And we just do yoga. So like we're hearing about like some cannibal guy while we're in child's pose. We all, they all like it. And we're like, all right. But if I didn't have the confidence as the instructor that I am. To like, go ahead and do that, you wouldn't do it. And then plus two with being a personal trainer, having confidence, like not even just like physical, but like mentally, like if you're a client, they say like, oh, this hurts. Like if you don't have confidence that you have the knowledge, you right. will just You'll melt. back away, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you'll shy away. So yeah, that's awesome. I mean, wow, <laughs> yep. <laughs> the, the, to, to do murder yoga, I think in itself takes confidence. I wouldn't literally look at a sheet of classes yeah. to take and say, hmm, murder yoga. I almost did Drake That's, yoga too. Drake we yoga? We didn't do that though. We might, didn't do might, that might do that one. Might do that one. Shouts out to Drake. If you, Drake. Uh oh. Come on up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like the murder yoga thing, just to even like, I guess, present that idea takes yeah. confidence. So that's really cool. But um, I don't want to keep you too long. All right. You've had such a long little journey tonight. She was driving through the rain and stuff, through spooky seasons in Halloween town and whatnot. So had my Joe Rogan to too. <laughs> oh, and you listen to Joe. Joe yeah. Rogan, if you want to come on right here. Or David Goggins. Yo, ev yeah. hit me up. <laughs> Love discussions. We'll make it happen. But thank you so much for coming on and providing your uh, insight on everything, especially with self-confidence. I love to see what you're doing online, and I hope that you continue doing it. I hope you're able to go down south for uh, the competition there. I so. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go down no matter what. Absolutely. Well, it was a pleasure. Totes my goats. Yeah, that's how I end it. And okay. it's a wrap! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think it's yeah, Sorry, I was so <laughs>